All right, so if you've been following the videos, then uh, we, we want, want to quickly talk about ADVAR versus ADVARS. So I'll just quickly write this down. So one is ADVAR, and the other is ADVARS. And this S here is the most important thing that you have to remember. It is like super, super, super important. Don't, I mean, I don't know how to make this more obvious, but like ADVARS has a big S on it, right? So just be careful because a lot of times people mean ADVARS, but they still put ADVAR and then you lose points for that. So now that you know the importance of having an S, let's go back to being normal. Uh, let's quickly talk about what it's used for. So if you remember this, you have um, 15 decision variables, right? So one way to add a decision variable is using this syntax here, which is you add each decision variable one by one. So in this case, either you can write this line down 15 times and each time change the name individually to match the syntax that we have here, or you do a for loop and inside the for loop, you do some fancy um, string manipulation or like naming with, with variables to come up with a name. Uh, the other way you can do it is use add var as, as they've done here, and it happens in one line. So I'll quickly explain to you what um, add vars does. So first of all, what is sections? This variable sections right here is um, basically these three items, use travel sports. What is advertisers? It's an array of these five items here. And so what, what this does is it creates um, a pair. And so I guess the best way to explain this is here. So let me make this bigger. Can I make this bigger? Yes. Okay, so what this is doing is it will create a pair and it will create each combination of these three and these five and create a new item for each one of them. So as you can see here, there's 15 rows and there's all combinations are there. And for each of these combinations, it will assign one decision variable. But notice how we haven't put anything like lower bound or um, GRB type or things like that. The only thing we've done is name, we'll get to that. But all of these things are optional. So if you go to documentation of Gurobi, you'll notice that lower bound, upper bound, name, all of these are actually optional. You can you can simply do add var and just add a variable. So what this does is it takes in the defaults um, for each of the variables. So all of these will be going to their defaults and you can read about, about the defaults um, in the Gurobi documentation online. So great, so then it does defaults, um, but then it put it it's put into one variable so what does this mean so basically what this is is this is another array so if you're familiar with excel it would be like if i were taking this entire thing and uh, let me copy this taking this entire thing and naming this entire range as allocated right if you're familiar with excel then you then you're familiar with with um this naming here but if you're not familiar with excel well basically what it's saying is inside this similar to how there's a bunch of different items here Inside this, there are 15, um, 15 elements, and you can reference each element one by one. So the way to reference it is um, you just have to give it the first and the second name. So the way it's done over here, for example, is this is how it's referenced. So it's very important to use the square bracket, uh, comma, and close square bracket. It's different than um, when you use circle parentheses but these are square brackets, so you have to remember to do that. But what it's saying is, okay, in ads allocated in this entire array, I want the specific section and the specific advertiser. So let's say the, in the first time around, this will, S will be news and A will be advisor Sausalito. So this will be news, this will be advisor Sausalito, and so this will get me this element here. And as the for loop continues, then it will get me news and bold cruises, then news and cool tickets, et cetera, et cetera. And so this is how you can um, get the variable because it's store, stored in the array, or even um, edit that variable um, if you want to. Now, what is names? So if you notice name, you're just giving it one name, ads. So what this does is this basically appends ads to the beginning of these two. So let me make this more clear, 
or where'd it go? Um, this is basically what it's going to be called. So the word adds will come first, then open square bracket, then the first element, then the second element after a comma, and then close square bracket, which is again why when you're referencing, you notice that this is very, the two syntax here are very similar. It's in this array, that's become the name, then the first element and the second element in separated by uh, separated by comma and inside square brackets, which is exactly what's happened here. And you can see this in the output also. So let's scroll down to the output of what Garobi has. And again, if you saw the other videos, you'd, you would know what this is. But these are the decision variables. And notice the naming of the decision variables is exactly like will be mentioned right here. So it's so adds, whatever name you give it will be the appended to the beginning. And to that, you will be adding um, the, the variables. So if we come back here, this is uh, giving a variable to each, each combination. But this can actually be extended to, again, don't forget the S, this can be extended to more than that. So Let's say you have um, you have shops, so one, two, three, and you have customers A, B, C, D, E, and then you have product, which is Apple or um, mouse. So you can do add vars. And in this, let's go back to the syntax. So where's the syntax? Uh, right here. So then you do, so again, I'm, see I made a mistake here. So you do open parentheses, then you add in shops, comma, customers, comma, product. Oh, no, and then you give it a name, um, comma, name equals to, and let's give it completely something completely random. So let's call this M, for example, and close it. So what the first one, my first variable would look like inside the array would be M, right, from the, from the name, open square parentheses, then the first shop, so one, comma, the first customer, A, comma, the first product, Apple, and close parentheses. This would be the, the name of my first variable, and then et cetera, et cetera. But if you notice, then in one single line, we have three shops times five customers times two products, which is equal to 30, right? Yeah, 30 variables. And then again, notice the S, very, very important. If you, Especially if you're going to use... Uh, this syntax here, you have to add the S. Otherwise, um, you lose points. So I hope this was this was helpful in understanding the difference between advar and advars, and a little understanding of how you index into it, which is done this way. Which again, remember, is different from this. Notice the difference between how indexing is done for both of these, and spend some time understanding why. This is specifically for indexing into variables that are created using add bars. This is indexing into um, any data frame. And that's what's going to be used everywhere. So this is specific to adding variables. And then um, understanding that the naming structure for each of these variables looks like this, where the name that you give it is appended to the beginning, and then the combinations of all the different sub variables is included here.